so I have the green candle pants. You know, we're wearing green instead of orange. And I have the Bitcoin moon sock game. And and it's not just, you know, when moon kind of Lambo. No, this this bull market that's just getting started, like we haven't even gotten to crypto fall. That doesn't happen till June. The halving is still yet to come. And we have one more SpaceX-like explosion that, that was planned, be- right? You know, after the Ides of March, before tax season this year, there's one more selling wave that's coming and people are going to go, oh my God, it's over. No, 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 no. Renowned hedge fund manager, Mark, views the recent rally that propelled Bitcoin's price above $52,000 for the first time in over two years as merely a precursor of what's to come later this year. In his latest interview with Scott Marker, Mark explains that we are still in the midst of crypto summer, characterized by steady rallies rather than parabolic blow-off top moves typical during crypto fall. Mark predicts that these parabolic moves will commence in June and persist into the following year. However, he warns of an impending sell-off as the halving event approaches in April. While Mark doesn't foresee the sell-off having long-term repercussions, he cautions that it may cause significant fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the market. Recent reports from Bloomberg indicate that Genesis Global Holdings COLLC has received approval to liquidate its GBTC investments valued at approximately $1.3 billion. Concerns have arisen within the crypto community regarding the potential market impact of the sell-off. Nevertheless, Genesis is mandated to execute the disposal gradually in collaboration with the brokerage, adhering to a structured plan. Mark believes that the GBTC sell-off shouldn't be a cause for concern. However, he expresses apprehension about the impact of tax season in the United States. Despite these potential challenges, Mark maintains a highly bullish outlook on Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in 2024. Every year there are two um, something burgers and they are bigger three out of the four years. In fact, they, they don't really happen in the, in the fourth year because the bad year, there are no gains to worry about. But what happens the Lunar New Year, every year, we, you know, we just had it, um, before Lunar New Year, there's a bunch of selling in China to fill up the red envelopes with cash. And it has happened every year since Bitcoin was started. And everybody's like, why is there selling pressure? Like, do, do you not understand a billion six people filling up red envelopes with cash? They, they, they sell some Bitcoin. So that's, that's one. And so we, we survived that. That was no problem. And that actually coincided with the GBTC liquidations and all that good stuff. But then you have Uncle Sam has to get paid. And you know, it's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, government, we don't, we don't care about Bitcoin. Bitcoin's a fraud. It, it just doesn't matter. It's the fifth question <laughs> on the tax, the tax return. It's insane. It's yeah. the fifth question. So after a really good year, and last year was a really good year, up 130%, 155%, sorry, 155%. So there's going to be some taxes due. And people are going to sell to pay taxes. And that happens every three out of the four years, because you get three good years and a bad year, three good years and a bad year, three good years and a bad year. And Tim Peterson, who who I love, I love Tim, just put out this morning this cool thing that we just yesterday, over the 52 weeks, up exactly 100%. And that has happened, I can't remember exactly how many times he said, but in every incidence, the next 12 months, we're up 100%. So that's interesting. I, I think we are exactly on schedule. And, and I've actually been talking about this for a while. I mean, you and I talked about this nine months ago, nine or 10 months ago. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But, and I've talked about it every Friday on, on, my, uh, on the Margin Show for over a year that the four-year cycle exists because of the having, right? Having embeds this natural proclivity for price to rise Otherwise, the miners who are integral to the success of the, the protocol would find themselves in, in a pinch because their electricity costs and, and space costs are fixed. So long story short, you have this cycle. And the cycle is exacerbated by humans, like the people watching the show. And you know there are investors, people who buy assets when they're below their fair value. There are traders who don't give a shit about fair value. They just like to trade movement. 
There are speculators, which are the other side of hedgers. Hedgers are people who like produce things and have to sell, like, like the miners or oil producers. But then there are the gamblers. And the gamblers are the people who don't understand or really care. They just want number go up. And then they buy on leverage. And that's what pushes us to the crazy parabolic blow off top. This is fair value. Fair value, according to, again, to Tim's Metcalf's Law model, and I've been using the Metcalf's Law model since 2014, Metcalf's Law is the definitive way of calculating the value of a network, any network, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Apple, whether it's Bitcoin. And so the Metcalf's Law model said the fair value was about 52000 Now, I've been rounding it to fifty to make it easy. But when we were at 25, not that long ago, I was like, look, we're going to migrate slowly toward fair value of 50. And guess what? Here we are, almost yeah. up to the halving. But then what happens is the halving in previous cycles doubles the fair value. I'm like, well, what do you mean? When well, you think about it, if the block rewards go down in half, the price has to adjust upward 100% to keep the revenues the same. Now, this time there's a subtle difference. So what I what I was saying before ordinals was that at the halving this year, now you know, now it's going to be April 8th, which is kind of a coincidence. That is a total total solar eclipse, which I think is an interesting day to have the halving. But anyway, um, and so that 100 k number was my base case, but then ordinals happened and transactions went up and transaction fees went up. So it's possible, and I'm, I'm, I'm still working on this part. It's possible that fair value only goes to 75 or 80. Let's just, let's just say 75. So then the investors have been buying all this time up to fair value. Okay. Well, now we have new people. We have traders, we have speculators because the hedgers are selling. The gamblers haven't even showed up yet. Once they show up and once the leverage starts, then we go right through fair value. So right past 75. Probably in history, we go to 2.3x. I was going to say we value. more than doubled it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at the peak. We go to 2.3x at the peak. So we went to 69 on, on a fair value of 30 and or 68. What it was. And so I don't think we'll go 2.3 times because I think there's less leverage. I think we go two times fair value. That's 150. So sometime between... Thanksgiving this year and June of the following year, uh, that's when we see the the new all time high, and it's convenient for them to, you know, rail against the things that are disrupting. And this, look, this is not unique. This has happened for centuries. Centuries there have been disruptive technologies, right, and disruptive ideas. I mean, Galileo wasn't really well liked when he kind of said, <laughs> "We, you know, the, the world doesn't or the, the universe doesn't revolve around the world. He, he wasn't well liked. And, um, you know, he suffered for his sins, so to speak. But every disruptive idea or every disruptive technology has been resisted by those with the most to lose. And, and that's logical, right? I always use the, the, the favorite example of, of the red flag law. Everyone knows, heard the term red flag, and we use it for different things. But where it came from is when the, you know, unions who, you know, scooped the poop of the horses and, and saddled the horses and made the whips didn't like the horseless carriage. So they lobbied, fancy word for corruption, paid New York City to pass a law called the red flag law that said if you had a horseless carriage, you had to hire a human to walk in front of it with a red flag. Now, has anyone ever seen a person walking in front of a car with a red flag? No, because that was a dumb idea, but, but it actually was a law that got passed. And inevitably, disruptive technologies that are good, not all disruptive technologies are good, but disruptive technologies that are good catch on. And you know, this, this is a technology, the base layer of money, the digital base layer of money for the digital age, that is not going away. No matter how hard they cry, complain, object, 
try to, you know, dissuade people through FUD and, and just outright lies, this movement of electronic and physical analog assets into the digital world is not going to stop.